I'm going to set the record straight on the debate with real estate photographers on whether to turn interior lights on or to turn those lights off. And now opinions are split down the middle on this, so for various reasons, but I'm gonna dig into the reasons for this, but more so to explain the various cases when this could be appropriate and certain cases when it's not and how to tackle it for various situations. So the root of this lights on, lights off debate comes mostly from color casts from various interior lights where various interior lighting sources will have numerous color temperatures from incandescent bulbs, fluorescent tubes, and even LED bulbs that can have a variety of color temperatures. Each creates a different color that pollutes the scene with various colors, making it difficult to set a proper white balance in camera or in editing. So to avoid those color problems, a lot of photographers say just, well, turn the lights off. Problem solved, right? Well, not exactly. It won't work in all cases, and in some cases, it can make the image worse. So a common justification to do this is, besides getting rid of the color casts, is that you would then have a photo with a more natural appeal, more natural light in there, but this causes other problems. For one, it's not just the lights inside that are causing you color cast problems. It'll also be from the outside where you have, for instance, green grass that the sun is reflecting on. It's coming in to the inside. You could have it also from blue pools, some red patio coverings, red brick that's outside, maybe on some pavers. All those things where the sun is hitting it outside near a window is gonna cast back into the room as well. So it's not just the inside lights, but also those other natural light sources outside. Even if you had no problem with the outside color cast and you were to shut the interior lights off to get rid of the color cast, you're still going to have another issue and that's that by having the lights off, when you're trying to market a real estate property, then you're going to not be highlighting necessarily all of the selling features of the house. So when you come across kitchens like this that have these overhead lights up here, those are important to show. You don't wanna have those off. And it also can make it look like you're just shooting in a power outage, but you would have naturally kind of an orangish glow off these. So using the flambient technique, I was able to take care of that. But these are important things to show. This fixture is a selling feature and you wanna highlight what it does. Realtors are gonna expect it, builders are gonna expect it, architects are gonna expect it. And even in this case where it's just a small bathroom, but they put in an expensive chandelier up here, and other bathrooms here were, for instance, their sconces. They don't want those sconces turned off. These were expensive sconces. They want those turned on. Now, they will cast orange if you don't do this properly. So by doing this properly, though, we've got these images that have a good balance of color by using the proper techniques. But if you had these lights off, even the ceiling cans, you're just not showing the impact of the house. Same goes for like the uh, under cabinet lighting down here on the floor. This is all expensive selling features to these high-end homes and even medium and lower priced homes. If they have these type of lighting features, you want to be able to show them because those are selling features. Now, none of this is an issue if you use the flambient process correctly, which is something I show in my online course and also in my books on real estate photography. And I have links to all that stuff, by the way, down in the description for this video. So if you use the flambient process correctly, then you don't have to worry about how much light is gonna be shed from an interior light, what color it's going to be putting in. You have control over that entirely in the flambient process. And that's why a lot of pros like myself use flambient or incorporate other types of flash photography so that you can gain a lot more control. If you control the light in the scene, you control the color, you control the image, you're not left to what ambient light would then leave you as far as bright areas or the color that could be shed from various color sources. Still, there are times, no matter what, where sometimes it's good to turn some of these interior lights off. Table lamps, standing lamps, and other lights that are not part of the property, they can be turned off if they're causing some problems, but they don't necessarily have to be. By using flambient properly, you can control their color and brightness as well. 
So there's an option that's kind of bandied about with HDR photographers because doing HDR you do have to rely on everything being ambient. So one idea that's bandied about is take two types of shots. One with the lights on and one with the lights off. Then you could take the light, the one with the lights on, lay that over top of the one with the lights off, maybe even put the lights on photo in luminosity blending mode to get rid of its color, and then you can control the two. But here's what you'd have to do. One, yeah, there is a little bit more editing involved with that, and HDR can have a lot more editing like I showed in a prior video, and link to that also, by the way, down in the description for this video. But the important thing here is that now you're defeating the purpose of why you chose to use HDR to begin with, and that is time, it's speed. So HDR has the advantage of being able to go through a property very quickly, it can take more time to edit compared to Flambient, usually it does. But if you're spending then more time on site by turning on all the lights, making sure that they're all off, and knowing where all these lights are, because when you're in a property and you don't have that much time, somebody probably has turned the lights on for you. Now you have to find all the lights, turn them off, take more shots. Well, during that amount of time, you're gonna just pop some flashes and be done and just have the flambeant and have a faster editing workflow. So if you're gonna do the lights on, lights off, blending type of approach, you're kind of defeating the whole purpose of doing HDR. You can get a better quality picture by doing the flambeant technique instead. And besides that, when you take a look at doing flash photography overall, you can control where you want the light to be because ambient won't always do you favors. A, a great example of this is just take any shower pop. So let's take this bathroom shot for example. This is just an ambient shot and you can see the shower really doesn't stand out. There's no amount of ambient that's really going to help that out because of some of the reflections that are in there. Doesn't really get a good amount of light that's in there, but by doing a shower pop, now that shower stands out. So this is just your typical flambient uh, by overlaying the uh, ambient layer in uh, luminosity blending mode, just adding a little bit of it in there, but then shooting those shower pops like I've showed in other tutorials, my books, my online course, this gets you a shower that really pops. Now this was for a designer, but I do this for all of my clients. It's a selling feature for the house. If you're just to try to work with ambient, no amount of HDR is gonna make this shine. It just won't have the same type of clarity, color accuracy, nothing compared to if you had just done a shower pop. So this is an example of where you can put light. So here's another example. It's what I call light disparity. And this is where there's such a drastic amount of light between one area and another. In this case, the, the far part of this primary bathroom compared to the near part. And so with that, this being just an ambient shot, there's no amount of ambient that you're gonna be able to mix together to really get a good amount of light. Because once I do flambient, the color of these lights on the paint, all this color is taken care of. Now I have true accurate color and more so, I did some shower pops. So now let's go back and forth on here. This is the before, this is just ambient with no shower pop that I'd have to try to use some other ambient shots to do HDR, but if I just did flambeant with a shower pop, then I get this, a much cleaner result. Same thing goes when I go into the room itself. So over here, I still have a great amount of light disparity where I'm trying to show this $15,000 steam shower in this very expensive tub in this bathroom, which probably costs about $80,000 completely to remodel. But with this, it, there's no amount of ambient light here. This is all ambient. There's no amount of ambient that's gonna make that shower pop. But instead, by doing some flambient with a shower pop, then I get this. I get something that's much more controlled. I don't have to worry about the color. I don't have to worry about all these highlights that were down here. If we go back to that image, we can see that it's completely blown out out here with ambient, but it's completely dark over here. Once again, there is no amount of ambient brackets that can solve that for you using HDR. So by using some flambient and then along with those shower pops, you get a much more impactful image. You don't have to worry about the color. Leave all the lights on. That's easy just by using flash. So bottom line, if you're doing professional level real estate photography, then this whole lights on, lights off debate really doesn't matter as much. There are cases where you wanna turn off maybe some standing lamps and some uh, table lamps that really don't do any favors. They might be too close to the camera. You might have a lamp near a window, which doesn't make any sense when you're taking a picture. 
But leaving some of those on can still add a little bit of impact. But since like using Flambient, you're doing the control of the light yourself, you're controlling the light, you're controlling the color, you're in control of the entire image. So really it's not much of an issue if you're doing professional real estate photography using Flambient. If though you're doing HDR, then your decisions are much harder because in a lot of cases, ambient light will do you no favors. Sometimes there are cases where you want to do all flash because ambient light is so bad. So once you learn these techniques that are used in Flambient, you can decide where do I want to pop my flash? Where do I want to do that? And it goes very quickly once you get used to it. But if you're doing HDR, then you really have to make a decision on this. One, you could shut off the offending lights that aren't selling features of the house. So if you're doing HDR, Turn off the standing lamps, turn off the table lamps, unless you feel that they can add something to the image. But you really do need to leave on the other lights that are expensive selling, selling features, and that even includes the ceiling cans. I'm not just talking about $1,000 pendant lights. I'm talking about even the ceiling cans. Basically, the lights off approach is just something that won't cut muster when it comes to high paying clients. And I'm not just talking about architects, builders, stagers. Yes, they're going to expect that, especially people that have built those properties like builders and remodel companies, but even the listing market, because they know from a selling perspective, buyers will have a certain psychology seeing those features lit up that shows something positive. Think about walking into a house during a blackout. Is it as inviting as when the lights are on? No. So lights on is always a better selling appear, appeal just for even buyer psychology. So to settle this issue, if you are finding that you really have to make a decision between lights on and lights off, you're probably using the wrong technique. Taking a look at professional flambient will solve all those issues and then it'll also allow you to make higher reliability, higher quality and consistent real estate photos for a variety of agents and a variety of real estate markets.